Hi, it's the Vegucator, Jeff Shire, owner of Mattress To Go. Consumer Reports came out with another one of their mattress review ar articles in their May 2013 issue. And like in previous years, I wanted to comment upon this article and hopefully give you some information that you can actually use when you're out there shopping for a mattress. And the first point is, they chose 12 inner spring and memory foam mattresses. And they went to Costco, Ikea, Sealy, Serta, Stearns & Foster, and Tempur-Pedic. And out of the 500 mattress brands that we have in America and the tens and thousands of models, they chose 12. And this is part of the problem I've always had with Consumer Reports. They take a very, very small selection, usually within the geographic region where their reporters live doing the articles, and that's what they base their recommendations upon. And that's not how you have to do these things. They should educate you about foam technology, inner spring technology, how mattresses are assembled, and then you're actually empowered as a consumer and you can go out there and compare model to model. Another thing they talk about in the article is what's best for back sleepers. Now, they need to really differentiate between comfort and support. Now, support comes from the inner spring unit or the base foam within the mattress, and that what stop, that's what stops you from bottoming out. Comfort is the upholstery and quilt layers of foam placed upon that support, that support core or layer, and that's what contours to your body and helps distribute your weight over a wider area, increasing blood circulation and minimizing pressure points. Generally speaking, side sleepers like a little bit of a softer surface comfort, back sleepers more medium, stomach sleepers a bit of a firmer surface comfort. But you always want to differentiate between support and comfort. You always want a good strong support of inner spring unit or foam base core unit within your mattress. Never get away from that. Now another thing they talk about, they, they touch on gel, and this is a big buzzword within our industry. And they say gel made, made little difference. Well, claims of a mattress sleeping cooler because you have gel in it, that's not correct. When you see the scrap particles of gel mostly in memory foam, what happens is when you compress that memory foam to its smallest point, it will be more supportive. And that's because you're squeezing the little gel particles together at the very, very end point of that compression. But as far as helping you sleep cooler, you can put a gel polymer into a memory foam and, and it can maybe help transfer the heat a little bit better, help to lock in the open cell structure of the foam a little bit more. But you'll still sleep cooler in an inner spring product generally than a foam bed. And certainly, you're not going to sleep cooler using gel than another product. It may be cooler than other memory foams, and that's more due actually to the open cell structure of the memory foam, but it's not going to make you sleep cooler than an inner spring product or anything else. Uh, that's a bit of the misnomer and the misleading characteristic of some of that advertising that you see out there regarding gel beds. One thing that they did do that's pretty good within the article, they give you uh, 10 ways to get more shut eye and they've got some really good suggestions there you know keeping a good uh, sleep environment don't, don't exercise before bed things like that and that's actually something that I would recommend on page 43 of the article that you take a look at good advice right there based upon research one thing they talk about is try the bed before buying and certainly we want you to lie down upon the product that only makes sense this is a subjective experience but they said that uh, some of the beds were softer than promised and I don't know what that statement means. Who promised it? Did somebody in the store say the bed was softer and uh, are going to be harder than it was softer? Or there's no objective softness scale within our industry. So again, that, that's a bit of a statement that confuses me. They say spend at least 10 minutes on the bed. Now, if you're on a memory foam bed, you do want to spend a little more time on it because your heat will make that foam a little bit softer. But there's actually research that we've used for 20 years that does four-year follow-up studies with people, and they show the first 30 to 45 seconds on the bed is the most accurate indicator of your happiness, provided that you've spent some time and been pre-qualified and a good grouping of beds has been put together for you by the way that you sleep in your individual health characteristics. So I guess that's a bit of a qualifier. I will tell you why stores want you to spend 10 to 15 minutes on each bed on each side. It keeps you in the store. And that's, that's the big thing. Once they've got you through the front door, they do not want you to leave. It really doesn't take that long. They talk about the uh, name game, and this is very true. Brands will put different names on the same bed and a different color covering to confuse you. Again, another reason why you need to know about foams and inner spring units, and that way you can actually objectively compare from the East Coast to the West Coast, from Montana to Florida, you can find similar or the same products. And again, that's empowering the consumer. That's what we want you to, want you to do and want you to learn. They talk about considering the winter months. You know, here earlier they talked about how gel didn't make you cooler, but then they're saying some of the beds keep you a little bit warmer. Well, we're supposed to keep the, the temperature of the bedroom the same throughout the year, depending upon the research, anywhere from 63 to 70 degrees. So whether it's summer or winter, 
we want the bed to transfer heat very well because once you get line in that spot, you're going to come to a resting temperature and we don't want the mattress to, to hold heat in for you. And you don't want to choose a bed that's warmer. So for four months out of the year in the winter, it keeps you warm. So then what, are you going to switch to another mattress during the other eight months out of the year? Again, this, this really doesn't make too much sense. They do talk about latex. This is one thing that where I think the reporters get really lazy here, latex concerns. There's a difference between vulcanized latex, which is used in mattresses, and the dipped latex, like in gloves or band-aids in the healthcare industry to which people have an allergic reaction. I am allergic to latex. I sleep on a latex mattress. I sleep on a latex pillow. Look, here's a piece of latex. I can put this all around me. I'm not going to, to break out in hives or have an allergic reaction or go into an anaphylactic shock. When latex is vulcanized, it changes the antigen, prop changes the antigen properties uh, from HEV-B5 to HEV-B1. And, and this is all around us in the air. We don't get the antibody reaction. We don't get the allergic reaction to that. And somebody writing the article could have found that out in about 30 seconds searching on the internet. Um, there's a really good article uh, from the Food and Drug Administration from 2003 that, that presents about this. So if you've got a good latex bed, it's nice and clean, you have latex allergies, it's not really going to present an issue to you. And it's sort of a shame that they talk about this way because a good Talalay latex, what's called a virgin latex without fillers, is one of the most durable, most comfortable, longest lasting foams that you can put in a mattress if you enjoy that, you know, that type of feel. They talk about keeping your old box springs, uh, if that's possible. All you need is a good, firm, firm, flat, hard surface. If your foundation box springs are hard and flat like the floor and they don't flex, you'll be fine with any modern one-sided mattress and you shouldn't have to replace them. So that's a, that's a good piece of advice. You can save some money there. They do mention about flipping and rotating the mattress. Now most beds are one-sided these days, so all you can do is rotate them. Some are two-sided, so you can flip them over, but those are very rare in the industry these days. They tend to be the more expensive handcrafted beds out there. They do talk about checking the pillow. You do need to remember the bed for your head. But unlike what they talk about here in the article, you need to test that pillow out on the mattress that you're selecting and have an informed comfort consultant find out the way that you sleep if you're a side back or stomach sleeper and then recommend a pillow that's not only appropriate for the way that you sleep but also matches up properly with the plushness of the mattress that you're considering purchasing. They do talk a little bit about return policies and, and warranty issues. One thing I will talk about is these comfort exchange programs. Our industry is very much set against them, but many stores have these uh, programs for certain fees. Not only does it add to the overall cost of the product, but the real reason they have them is they say, hey, you choose the wrong bed, you can always exchange it. And they don't go into too much detail usually about all the fees associated with that, but it's a way, again, to separate you from your wallet and just to get your money right away. Instead of spending the time, and actually finding the right bed the first time. Another problem with comfort exchange beds, people think those go back to the store and they go back to the factory, and that's not the case. Usually, and this is one of our dirty little secrets within the industry, they're rewrapped and resold to other people, unfortunately, without their knowledge. Or they're intermingled with the new mattresses, which you don't want. You don't want a bed that's been out of the front door of any store because they're like sponges. You know, air travels through them and they absorb everything that's within the air. So, just one thing to consider when you're, when you're you know, going to a store and looking at their different policies. They also talk about don't forget to haggle. And this is one of the unfortunate things within our industry is it's the pricing is so dishonest, these fake 50 to 80% discounts. I'll give you an example. One of my reps was visiting a store on the East Coast that sells his product that he reps here in the Midwest. And it's a bed that would normally sell at $5.99 in, in, a, in a store that's a fair price. We sell the same bed for $4.79 here at our store. But he went into the store and the bed was marked at $11.99. And he talked to the salesperson. He goes, what's up? Why is that bed marked so ridiculously high? Reduced from over $2,000 to $11.99. And, and the salesperson said, that's just the way that we do it here. Um, we haggle with the person. They think they're getting $300 bucks off. They think they're getting a, getting a great deal. But then I get to split whatever amount over $5.99 that I sell this bed for, plus my commission, plus my bonus, plus my spiff. And our industry is its own worst enemy in that way. But as a consumer, unless you knew about componentry and knew what was on the inside of that mattress, how are you going to know if you're, if you're getting a good deal? Again, that's why I have such a problem with these Consumer Reports articles. They, they don't really help you with that. That's, my education videos help you with that, but not, not Consumer Reports. So unfortunately, at a lot of stores, you have to haggle. But really, if you go into a store where 
it's marked up that high and you have to argue to get the price marked down that low, you know, what else are they lying to you about? I don't recommend that you, that you uh, take your business to stores that operate in that manner. They say don't get pushed to pay more, and this is very true. Our industry is a not, it's not a get what you pay for industry. Just because the bed costs more doesn't mean it's better. Sometimes it's just thicker and stuffed with more padding, but it doesn't mean it's going to last longer or be more comfortable or give you a better night's sleep. You know, they, they talk about medical advice. They're, if you find a bed that says it's going to cure this or cure that, again, walk out the door, don't consider that product. You, you can't make claims like that within our industry. You need to learn about componentry. They said, look for smart salespeople. Well, how in the heck do you know if that salesperson is smart or if they just are very eloquent and, and they speak well and they can give you a pitch and they can sell you know, ice to somebody who lives in Siberia? Unless they give you good information or, or link to sites where you can learn about the products, again, they're just putting you at the mercy of, the, of these people, of the salespeople that they actually bash in the article. They tell you to enlighten yourself, but... Then they don't tell you how to do it or give you facts or figures or places to go. So overall, you need to educate yourself to make sure that you're not taken advantage of by these salespeople, but they really don't give you ways to do it within this article. So it's a lot of the same thing that I've had, uh, problems that I've had in, in the previous years with, with these Consumer Reports mattress review guides. They don't empower the consumer. They're just picking a few beds, telling you which ones to choose, and leaving it at that. And for that... Last year I gave them a half black circle. This year they're getting the full black circle. And until they step up their game, these articles really aren't, as a con you know, for the consumer, they're really not doing you much good. Take a look at my education videos. Those are free. You don't have to pay for them. They're objective. And, you know, we're just, we're just helping educate consumers in that way. And there are other places to look as well, but that's a good place to start anyway.